Good evening. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. Mr. Iser. Good evening, everybody. I have two A&R plans that I need to go over with you this evening. I sent both of them to Bill and Jim. I don't know if they uh, passed them around. I'm assuming they did. Um, so let's do Kelly first. And if you want to teach me how to do this screen sharing thing, I can try that. I think I have this computer set up to do it. So first I have to enable you to share the screen. Okay. That's done. Okay. And then uh, I think you just want to go find your so PDF I, and click on it. Do I hit share screen at the bottom of my screen? Uh, yes. And then, okay. Ha uh ha. -huh. Share files. And you should have a choice. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I got to pick a file and then hit share. Is that correct? Yeah, let me see. Yeah, you should be able to choose which screen. And then um, when you select that, you have to hit OK share. Share. That doesn't do me any good. Oh, I, you might have clicked the wrong screen. Okay. So then you have to unshare or stop sharing. Should... <laughs> yeah. Okay, stop share. Got it. And then go go back to share. Yeah. Screen, and it should show you your options of what screens you have open, what what windows you have open. Well, so it says portion of a screen, PowerPoint as virtual background, music or computer sound only. So I want portion of a screen, right? That's not what mine usually looks like, but no. that's not basic. I have basic, advanced, and files. And if I go to files, I put these things on my desktop, and I can't find the desktop. So anybody, Bill, are you able to do that? You sure. know, I think uh, basic should be okay. Um, <laughs> and I just don't know where to go. Okay. Um, so let me see if I can uh, pull it up. When did you uh, send that to you? When did you send that? Probably Wednesday last week. You're talking Stockbridge Street? Yes. 1230. OK. Kelly A&R. OK. Yeah, I drove up there. That's the um, Pool of Grace farm. Yeah. Well, it's kind of, yeah, it's part of that, Mark. <laughs> right. It's behind that. And there it is. Let's see how this works. There, there it is. <clears throat> see it. Uh, Come on. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm I'm totally lost on my screen. Okay. I don't, I don't yeah. know what I'm doing anymore. All right. Let me just play with something here. I see it on my screen. I just can't get back to where I was. Okay. Let me just see. I have to just double check. Um, yeah, let me do yeah. multiple participants can share. I, um, so uh, I did have it here. Um, and Echo Kelly. You got it now. Yeah, it's there. You're good. I'm. I just don't know what the heck. When you got it, Rick, can you just okay? Up? Now I'm back to reality. Okay. Just talk to him. All right. So, this is Ed and Kathy Kelly's farm, and um, in the past we've cut out a lot 
Um, hello. Well, now I lost it. Okay. I'm going to give it a another try. It, okay. it works. Did you click outside the window, Randy? I, I'm back to full screen. I had it on the screen and now it's gone. Okay. Is it still on everybody else's screen? No. How about now? Now yeah. you're on High Meadow Road. Oh, okay. Nope, that's High Meadow as well. It's here. Okay. Okay. Once more, we will try. <laughs> Uh, stuck share and yeah, sometime we should really learn how to do this. <laughs> well, we, are. we can practice in our spare time. Yeah. Right. We're, we're learning every meeting, just not very well. Hmm. Okay. The, re the retention is poor. So now, if I have that up, get out of there for now. Okay, share screen. Acrobat Kelly. There you go. Okay. Don't breathe. <laughs> Okay, so anyhow, in the past, we've done a, a lot on Stockbridge Street that Danny Kelly built a house on, which is to the east of what's shown as lot two. So tonight, what I'm doing is lot two is three barns, uh, which is we're just cutting that lot out that's going to be retained for farming purposes at this point in time. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but there is enough frontage there for two building lots if they decided to tear the barns down. But anyhow, so lot two, enough frontage, enough area, Hadley box fits in there, no problem. Parcel B is remaining land of the Kellys that is not in the APR program. Uh, the, the lot shown as parcel A to the east is in the APR program. This parcel B is not the family's trying to decide what they want to do with the rest of it. So it's just shown as a, a contiguous parcel. It is, does not have enough frontage for a legal lot. So it's got a note on there that says not a buildable lot under current zone. And I have a note under where the board would sign that says endorsement for lot two and parcel B only because everything else that's shown on here has been on another plan. So, so we're just approving lot two and parcel B, Randy. Correct. Okay. You, you know, by way of history, is especially for Mark, uh, Kelly family has put obviously a sizable amount of the farm into APR, and that's that parcel Randy was referring to. But the history of this particular farm and the uh, <laughs> the taking a splitting of their farm with a road and div diverting the mill river around their farm and the exit on uh, route 116 this this was obviously difficult for them to handle but uh it's nice to see that such a great amount of the farm went into apr and now you try to satisfy the the children, which is going to be increasingly <laughs> difficult, but uh, it appears that they're they're doing it, or Randy's doing it. So I I applaud your effort. Well, it's that it's up. To, the family tells me what to do. Yeah, okay. That I have the easy part. <laughs> so that's that's that one. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer it. So we'll take one at a time. Any other questions on this one? Comments. Looks okay. good. If not, I'll make motion to uh, endorse the A and R plan. I'll second. Okay. Any other any other comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, anybody opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Very good.
So, right. Randy, you, you know one of three people can sign for you? Yes. Yeah, anyone. Right. Okay. Right. Once we get through this other one, and then I'll, you know, I'll get a hold of somebody tomorrow. Okay. Okay, Bill, work your magic. Okay. Now, let's see where the other one was. That came probably no, no. the day before, I think. Okay. Uh, so let me rotate this first. And hey, Randy. Yes, sir. Question on that. You've only got 125 feet of frontage for parcel B. Right. It says not a building lot on it. Okay. All right. All right, Bill. No, you're, you're getting good. Okay, this is the one that I talked to you guys about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Four Lawrence Plain Road, owned by Becky Chimura. Uh, David Chimura was her husband. He passed away six months ago or so. Um, she's doing what she's doing to save the farm, so to speak. Uh, she needs to sell a lot to keep the house. Um, so we've got... We're in the aquifer on this one. We need 200 feet of frontage, 40,000 square feet, um, and 150 foot square in each lot, which is all shown on the plan. Um, the, yeah, the box on the, the house, the existing house lot doesn't go th completely through the house, but we talked about that. The width of the lot behind the house is certainly more than 150 feet, so there's no issue there. Um, yeah, pretty cut and dry as far as that goes. Uh, all the, the buildings all meet, uh, setback requirements on any new lot lines that I created. Any comments, other comments? Oh, good work, Randy. Thanks. <laughs> motion to approve. I'll make the motion. I'll second. I, I would Any second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Randy, out of interest, across the street, across Bay Road is pretty steep hillside. Is that lot two? I can't remember. Will that be an, an easy driveway or? It should be fine up at the end where they'd put the house. At the corner, it's, it's nasty, at, but up there, it's not bad. At the east end, it's okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Which would be better the further it is from the corner. So, yeah. Right. That's all that I have for the walk in section. You know. If you want to print out your uh, form A's, that's all, Randy. That's all. So you've got, you have the form A's, right? Yes. Okay. So who's going to print them out? I'm printing them out so I can put the values on them. Okay. You want me to, you want me to um, email and scan me, email them back to you? You could do that, or are you around tomorrow, Jimmy? I'm home all day tomorrow. All right, I will get a hold of you, and I'll come bring you the mylars to sign, give you the paper copies, and I'll just pick them up from you then. Okay, that's fine, yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. Okie doke. Uh, I guess Mr. Kozub is here, so we'll open the public hearing for Mr. Kozub and his accessory apartment. 
Jim, do you want to just take up Tom Reedy first? Oh, I yes, right. What's us to continue? Wait, Tom, Tom Reedy's requesting an extension for 97 Russell Street, which is the Hadley Auto Service, to February 2nd, Tom? Yeah, I think that'll be good. I mean, we're, we're working with DOT. They got the 25% plans. We've been going back and forth, but I just assume that getting that squared away before we really come in front of you will probably make the process more efficient. So I, I figure we, we do February 2nd, and then obviously if, if it's still getting kicked out, I mean, I, I think some of no, them just to know. Yeah, you can further it out. Okay. Something like right. that, but February 2nd at least to start, please. Okay. So Mr. Reedy's requested the extent, like you said, to February 2nd. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. We have a motion a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion passes unanimous. Perfect. Thanks very much. Happy Thanks. New Year. Good, Good luck. Year, everybody. Good luck sleeping, Tom. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks. Sleep, I'm going Tom. right out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bill, I just emailed you uh, a plan for COZIB that's going to show the house, the addition, and the driveway that's there. I, I don't know what Paul has given you up to this point, so maybe yeah. that'll help. Yeah, Paul's given us a plot plan. He drew in the parking on it like I asked him, so okay. we'll have, we'll, with yours, we'll have two of those. That's fine. Okay, good. Okay. Um, I'll just read the notice as it appeared in the Gazette and was mailed out. The Hadley Planning Board will conduct a Zoom public hearing on Tuesday, January 5th, 2021 beginning at 6.45 p.m. Zoom details at the end of the notice. Purpose of the hearing is to review the application of Paul Kozub for a special permit to create an accessory apartment at 3 Megan's Drive. The plans are available upon request via email to planning at hadleyma.org. And then I gave instructions on where to go to find it. Published twice in the Gazette, December 16th and 23rd. And as well, when I mailed out the notices to the abutters, I included the plot, the plan of the house and the uh, rendering of the house of what it would look like. So the abutters did get what the place would look like with the addition put onto it. With that, Mr. Kozub, you're up. You can explain what you want to do. Sure. Thank you, Jim. Um, so I think I got all the paperwork into everybody. Uh, I appreciate everyone's help in getting me all this information and I hope to move forward with the addition of my mother's uh, apartment uh, on our house. Okay. Um, we did get a notice from the Board of Health that said it was okay, it's adequate, the septic system. Um, and you're on town water, town, you're on Paul, town water, right Paul? Uh, yes. Okay. So the septic system is adequate. The plans, everybody has, I believe, has been given sets of plans. Um, I'm going to bring up the screen share if I can here. Okay. okay. How does that look? That's perfect. You, using the plan in front of you, Paul, I just want to quickly explain where the addition is on, regarding the the purple part of the, of the drawing. Sure. Um, so it's pretty much going to be at the end of the driveway. Uh, so I don't see any need to change the driveway at all. And so when you're driving in straight, uh, you're going to drive right into her one car garage. There's a small porch to the left. And then the accessory apartment goes straight back um, to the back of our property. Okay. Square footage. How how large is the addition, or how wide is the accessory apartment? I rather. Um, how wide is it? Uh, oh, no. How large? Do you know, I mean, do you have, do you have a square footage of it? Oh, it's uh, eight hundred and sixty-one square feet. Okay. Okay. Yeah, as I recall, part of the addition was for the house. I think what there was an expanded laundry or something. Yeah, so we had to, you know, figure out how to connect it and with the roof line and everything. So we're connecting it through our laundry room. So we're, we're putting in uh, an additional pantry on our side and I'm putting an office down there also. I'm going to bring up a couple of other. There we go. Yep. No, that's the same one. Um, yeah. 
So let me see if I can figure out why I can't get the architectural drawings. Oh, we just uh, we just saw the elevations. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't. Uh, I I didn't. That's why I. Uh... <laughs> okay. And I guess you can scroll because that says that's sheet one of four. Um. I would cancel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to stop share and try to go back to that. Um, so, okay, let me try to do it that way then. Huh, that's interesting. Uh, no, this is the high metal one, I'm sorry. Oh, there we go. Is that an elevation? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so... The outside. There we go. Yeah. The inside. Right. You can see the pass through at the laundry and the pantry adjacent with the garage. How, how big did you say the uh, accessory apartment was? I think I said it was 861, but now I'm looking at it, it's 891. She notified it there down in, in, in front of the one car garage. Okay. And then another version. And another version. Beautiful, Paul. You know, my mom has been in her house for 30 years. It's six, four or five bedrooms. So she's got a lot of stuff to move over. But we're trying to really, uh, you know, <laughs> started off much bigger, but we had to fit within our footprint of to make everything work. But she'll be here to help babysit. Well, you know, the accessory apartment bylaw doesn't require that the, um, the in-law or the tenant occupy the accessory apartment. You could move in there and let her uh, spread out in the rest of the yeah, house. She can have the whole, your whole house and you can move into the accessory apartment, Paul. <laughs> she can t yeah, we need a break from the kids, especially with yeah. the homeschooling. <laughs> she, let, let her take care of the kids in the other part. Right. <laughs> well, she, she raised five of her own, me being one of them, so she needs a break. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got four now, don't you? Yeah, he's one years old, so. Well, she's she's going to be, Grandma's going to be quite active with all those little ones around. She's got 19 in Western Mass, so she's busy. Uh, <laughs> you're going to have fun with them, I bet, being that close. You, the, yeah. They're going to love having Grandma around, I bet. I am. I'm happy. This is a, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased because she's been kind of isolated there in Wilbraham for a while. So. Okay. So we have a checklist to go through. <clears throat> we have uh, board of health compliance, separate housekeeping unit, only one accessory apartment plan shows interior and exterior changes. Conforms to the bylaw. <laughs> The plan uh, conforms to the bylaw. Um, you'll have some sort of an erosion control plan. Um, this is going to affect your um, your drainage plan because you're increasing the amount of impervious surface. <clears throat> I, you, you might not remember, but as part of the original subdivision approval, because of the uh, complexity of this layout, we were uh, presented with a separate drainage control plan for each lot based on what, because everything was custom built here. So each lot had a separate drainage control plan based on um, what was actually being built. Um, so I think we have to revisit that. You can, talk with the Quinlans about how they went about doing that. I Was it um, Berkshire Design? Was that Mark Darnold? Uh, I think it was SVE, Bill. SVE, okay. No, the engineer was a guy from 
uh, Greenfield. Greenfield, right. That's right. FVE. His name is Tony Wanseski. That's correct. Yeah, he was very good. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I, I'm going to make that a condition of the approval that we get a revised um, <clears throat> uh, drainage uh, report. It, it may not may not be an issue, but I think because this would because we were getting a separate one for each uh, each lot, I think we have to uh, carry through. Absolutely. Um, gross area not greater than 900 square feet, adequate on-site off-street parking and complies with Board of Health and building code. Um, so one, one. Um, so I'm ready to make a motion to grant the application uh, based upon the following findings and upon the following conditions. The project is in harmony with the general purposes and intent of the bylaw. Project is not detrimental to the established or future character of the neighborhood. Work will be conducted in accordance with the submitted plans, which are, uh, I'm just gonna attach them. And um, we are going to ask for a um, updated drainage calculation. For additional impervious surface surfacing. So if we give a conditional approval, does he have to come back with that? I think, can, uh, I think we can give a conditional approval on that. And I'll just flag it for the uh, building inspector that um, we'll need to we'll need to see that before. I'll I'll go ahead and I'll file the decision with the town clerk. There, there'll be an appeal period anyway, so you're um, you're uh, at least a month away from being able to start. So that should be enough time to take care of it. If it if it raises a a problem, we will be meeting again in two weeks. We can discuss it. And two weeks after that, so. Uh, in fact, the detention pond, one of the detention ponds is right close to the house, so. So. Oh, sorry, Bill. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just gonna finish the motion. The approval is for the specific intended use of the premises for an accessory apartment. Uh, permit is automatically revoked if the owner no longer lives there. Um, the accessory apartment shall not be enlarged beyond the 900 square feet, uh, may not be occupied by more than two adults plus related children. So that's 19, well, I guess grandchildren count. So that's 21 people in there. That's gonna be tight. <laughs> uh, um, and uh, accessory apartment cannot be occupied except under a lease that includes a provision against excessive noise or disturbance of the neighborhood. Um, and, um, if there is a, uh, sale, uh, there must be notification to the building inspector that the new owner understands the conditions of the accessory apartment bylaw, um, and subject to approval of other boards if and as required. That's the motion. Second. A motion a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. So we had no butters. It sounds like a, a popular The word, See what, a bottle, what, what a bottle of vodka can do for a little <laughs> this, so there were there is a decent amount of a butters. Yeah. Well, I mean, no one attended, I mean. Yeah. Well, this is the uh, aqua protection area. It's a large lot, so uh, it's not going to be, and there is no one to the south of them yet. So. Paul, I'll give you uh, Tony Wanceski's phone number if you want it. 
Perfect. Thank you. 802-257-0561. Yep. And I always forget, this is three megas away, but it's lot six? Yes. Okay, lot six. Okay. Okay. You have what you need. Thanks, guys. I appreciate your help. So before you go, we have two people here who I do not recognize. One is computer one and one is capital L lowercase s. So I just want to be sure you are not a butters who wanted to say something on this public hearing. You are both muted. I guess they want to stay muted. They have no comments. So, okay. They're just listening. Okay. Um, let's see. Some general information. Um, just a reminder on our next planning board meeting, Kevin Michelson is up for his accessory apartment on uh, Grand Oak Estate. And he there that may be an interesting meeting because they have both supposedly hired attorneys. I know the abutters are supposedly some abutters have hired an attorney for opposing the accessory apartment. And Kevin said he was going to hire an attorney on his behalf. I don't know what's going on, but I know Michael Pill is representing the abutters. Um, Bill, he said that he had a revised septic plan submitted to the Board of Health. Have you heard anything? I have not heard anything. Okay, I'll email the Board of Health, see if they've received anything. So we did have a uh, Gundersheim accessory apartment on uh, and I don't know if either of the other people are here for Gundersheim. That's Three High Meadow Road. I had sent the, uh, the builder the Zoom information. He did send me plans, which were, I had trouble getting them open. Uh, I couldn't read one of his pages at all. Same here. I don't know if anyone had better luck. Negative. No. Um, okay, I'll... Um, let's see. Uh, I guess I'll make a motion to continue it, see if they... Uh, and then get, try to get in touch with them. Was this the public hearing or information? This is the public hearing. The public hearing. I, I got the Gungershine apartment. Yeah, I got it to open. I got it open. Yeah. Okay. Page three has nine photos. Page two is the plot plan that I think you showed. And then the architectural plan is on page one. Okay. That was the one I could not get to open. Okay. Page one. It, it just... Uh, one. But, <clears throat> one, is, one is the... I have page one as the as the inside layout. Right. right. That's the floor plan. Yeah. Yeah. Three, the nine photo pages, because they they have put an addition onto their house for everybody's information, but they have not added the kitchen because that makes it the accessory apartment. Without the kitchen, it is just an addition to the house. So the building inspector said that you know he can't give you the a kitchen approval but you can put everything else on. So I'm assuming they've got a lot of the other stuff already completed. Um, but if they're not going to show up for the meeting, there's nothing much we can do. They'll do the, the image. How about the, oh. check, the, the sewer? Any indication about uh, from the sewer commissioners? I mean, with there's the public sewer, sewer there, I think. They're on sewer, so they can. They just got to add to the sewer. That's all. Yeah, we don't ask for um, certification from people on sewer, but yeah, they're they're not here. So um, <clears throat> I um, that's why I'll make a motion to continue it to uh, yeah. probably February second. Yeah. Okay. Motion. Do you have a second? I'll second. All in, okay. Any other discussion? All in favor for the continuation? Aye. 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 Any Aye. 
Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Um, Carolyn, you in a butter or an observer? Or? <laughs> Carolyn, she's the new town administrator, right? Yes, I know that. I just wondered what okay. brought her up our quiet way tonight. I don't, I don't think she, you don't, do you live in Hadley, Carolyn? I don't, I live in Wolverham. Okay, that's what I thought, yeah. Yeah, um, no, I just, Bill sends me the invites each time you meet and I, I like to sit in every once in a while um, and I saw on the agenda, you're gonna talk a little, uh, I don't know if it was gonna come up on um, um, the Affordable Housing Trust because I can just give you updates on the attorney's perspective if you you needed that. And I was just really just popping in to say, I'm interested in what's going on in town. So that was it. She's solely in charge now. Yes. Day two. <laughs> I did cheat though. I did have to call David today. Uh oh. <laughs> well, that's okay. That was a nice article in, in the Gazette. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating man. I'll miss him a lot. Okay. Um, okay. So we got the continuation. Public hearings out of the way. Um, well, affordable housing trust. We did receive a comment from the from uh, town council that they can use the money for rent subsidy. And I guess I'm not sure what it's what's going on with it. I guess that's up to the. Town and we got to get the money into the fund first. Right. I have been. Um, I touched base with the ZBA uh, and got a copy of the variance that they had granted back when we had our joint meeting, and I found our file here, um, and we had treated it as an amendment of site plan approval. And um, what's this one? What's this for now, Bill? Oh, uh, this is for the fund, the um, the source of funding for the affordable housing trust. Fund. Okay, okay. So the uh, the paperwork had not caught up with the way Barry Roberts had been doing it. <clears throat> okay. So uh, now I think I have all the pieces in one place, and I will uh, actually I should have. Uh, well, I, I'll talk to Tom Reedy about it directly. Okay. Um, and so we should be able to get those funds under our control pretty, uh, pretty easily at this point. Okay. From, uh, what is it, escrow? First. Yes. We'll okay. get tr transferred to the, to the town. And um, the treasurer is looking forward to investing it. <laughs> May I interrupt? Sure. Are, uh, are you willing to entertain the Gundersheim's builder? I have, I can get a hold of him, or is it too late since you continued it? No, no we have, the meeting is still open. So if, if I can get him on, will you, will you, can you deal with that? Sure. Okay, because yep. I texted him and said you were looking for him. Now he says he needs a Zoom link. I'm just going to forward him the email and uh, okay. see what happens. All right. Just a point of cl clarity here. It's Bill, as you know, it's not the town's money; it's the trust's money. Uh, and uh, some people have thought it was the town's money, and it's it's not. It's the trust money, and there's a board of trustees. There is that are respons but, we're responsible for it. But the, the the board of trustees exists by virtue of the town meeting vote. So in that sense, it is the town's money, but it's administered through i don't i i'd like i don't think it's the town's money i i disagree with that it is it is that i agree with well, it's the trust money if it's if it, if it weren't the town if it weren't the trust money why don't we just give it right to the town what's the difference because the trust is the, is governed by the rules that were adopted by town meeting and no it isn't state. it's governed it's governed by the, the state law and state land state law, yes. Well, I I disagree. Not that it can't be used for town purposes, but 
I, don't I, think so. I, I think we're splitting hairs on who it belongs to. Yeah. I mean, to really, the trust. The, the, the trust has the money, and they will dole it out according to the rules of the trust that were adopted by town meeting and accordance with state law. Okay, Kirk is the builder that's coming on the screen now for Gundersheim. Okay. Mike, to your point, I wonder who the escrow was in name, you know, was it in the name of Affordable Housing Trust or the town? No, of because the trust wasn't in existence yet, right. I don't think. In this case, it was probably the town of Hadley or, or the town. Yeah, I mean, but in the future, it's a good, it's a good question. Can the can the trust claim the money even if it's not in the trust name now? Does it belong to the trust? Mr. Dwyer might know someone who can make that happen for us. No, we're saying that was part of the original uh, amendment that it <clears throat> the funds would be held in escrow until the affordable housing trust. Okay, that's right. That's created, right. Thanks. Yeah. At which point it would be transferred. With a caveat that if the affordable housing trust fund were not to be created, then at some future point we would uh, revisit uh, uh -huh. this. Do we, do we need to uh, revoke our vote on continuing the Gundersheim? Or is there any I, I, withdraw, I withdraw my motion. This, who seconded? I, I think I seconded, so okay. I would draw the second. Uh, yeah, I had Mark down for second. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. That's I, uh, okay. I'm here. Yes. I'll second it. Okay. Mr. Kirk, you are up. Could you ex could you explain the Gungersheim apart accessory apartment project? Yes. Uh, it's an addition put uh, placed onto an existing house uh, for the purpose of allowing them to live uh, on the first floor, not in the basement, uh, with a bathroom. So, oh, I'm sorry. Um, <sighs> existing owners in their seventies allowed their son and family to move into the main house. They were going to assisted care living. They decided not to do that. And they moved in, back into their own house in the basement where there's no bathroom. Okay. So we, we did an addition um, with a bathroom and a small kitchenette. So they're on the first floor. How large is the addition? How wide? No, how, how large? large? Square footage? Uh, it's about 600. Okay. About 600 square feet. Okay. I, 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 I sent pictures. You did. Uh, I did. I, we've had some problems opening one the the image of the the blueprint didn't come out uh, on for okay. some of us, but it has come out for others. So okay, uh, I am now going to let's see. What do I have? There is. Uh, you want to try screen sharing with me, Bill? See, oh, you got it. Yeah, there it is. Yep, it is. that's it. So, so 613 square feet. That's right. Uh, so as you can see off the existing family room, that doorway used to be a window. Um, you walk into uh, basically an addition um, and it kind of fits with the style of the house slightly. Uh, same color, same finishes. Um, not much else to say about it. Okay, I'm going to try to bring up another image then. That's the the plot plan. Okay. Yep. And that is there also. Here's all, here's all the pictures. Okay. Pictures. Those are kind of awful because the grass hasn't grown in yet, but it looks good now. You put some snow down, everything looks great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Mm 
What is the line that comes down? It's oh, oh those are dimensions. I 92, yep. 93, 143, and 154. Okay. I thought that was like an easement going through there or something. No. Got it. It's free high meadow. Okay. So let me get out of sharing. And Go through our checklist. Uh, Board of Health, not applicable. It's on sewer, complete separate unit, only one per dwelling. Plan shows exterior and interior changes. Site plan conforms with the zoning bylaw. You're already constructed. Your, your erosion control has been adequate. Uh, your design is fine. Gross is less than 900 square feet. There is extra parking available and you've conformed to building standards. Actually, the addition is, is better than the existing house. <laughs> they really love it. It's. Uh... The temperature stays constant. It's it's really nice. So I will make a motion to grant the application for a special permit um, based upon the following findings. Project is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw. Project is not detrimental to the established or future character of the neighborhood. Work will be conducted in accordance with the plans you provided, which will be attached. Um, approval is for the specific intended use as an accessory apartment, automatically revoked if the if an owner no longer lives on the premises, uh, should not be expanded beyond the 900, uh, not occupied may not be occupied by more than two adults plus related children, right. uh, may not be sublet. Um, owner will occupy one of the dwellings. If the property is sold, uh, anyone wishing to exercise the rights has to agree to accept the conditions. And the approval is subject to the approval of other boards if and as required. I have one question. Sure. Um, so uh, uh, both the Gundersheims are in their 70s. The son and his wife and two kids live there now in the main house. Right. Um, the the uh, Julius and Marilyn, the the seventy year olds living in the in the apartment, um, still own the house. I'm I'm a their their question is is once they pass, or or one passes and they end up having to go into assisted care. And the son and his wife want to move downstairs into that that room. And, and they turn over ownership of the house to the son and the wife, do they then have to get that approved again? No. They just, what they need to do is basically send a letter to the building inspector and the planning board that they agreed to abide by the conditions that Mr. Dwyer just mentioned. Got it. You don't need to go through no new process. Even though the ownership changes? That's correct. Okay. They just need to agree to the conditions that were specified. Is that right, Bill? Yes. I understand. Okay. I understand. Yeah, we're right. not trying to make them jump through hoops, just one big hoop, and you <laughs> stay within hoop, essentially. I got it. I got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there, you know, this is an older street. It's not like Megan's Way. Uh, does this have any drainage concerns? I noticed drainage easement on it. This, this is not an older street. This is a newer subdivision. Oh, okay. Private private road. Yeah. What private road? Or at least it hasn't been accepted yet by the right. town. Uh, it, I, it's a small, I think it's what, three or four houses on it? On, it high, many, it, on high Meadow? Yeah. Uh, no, there's, there's, there's about 20. Oh, yeah. yeah Wait a minute. About, it's Parallel Lorena. 
it comes out across from Venture Way. It is a new it is a new road within the past twenty. Randy, maybe you can help okay. me with this. Oh, uh, okay. Hi, Matt. It's, it's across from. We're we're thinking of. Hawks. It's right. No, it's right behind uh, Home Depot. Yes, right behind Home Depot. And where Mike put up his stand against the. Uh, what was it, Mike? Yes. <laughs> the five college library yeah. annex, which, by the yeah. way. People are still talking about in town. I was going to see my physical therapist about a month ago and a woman was walking out on a crutch and I got a conversation with her and she said, weren't you on the planning board? Didn't you guys stop that annex from coming in? I said, yeah. She said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would have to have had to look out that up from my kitchen window. So see, we do have an effect on the quality of life in town. Okay. So my my error, I was assuming that this was on Hawks Meadow, which is that's right. That's what I thought it was. This is right. Pine Meadow. Okay. Uh, okay. Across the street. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So motion and need a second. Second. And motion a second. Any other any other comments? I didn't hear an answer. So there's no drainage concerns. I don't believe so. No. Okay. There, there's there's no. <laughs> So the, uh, when we were I went on Megan's, we were very sensitive to the drainage because everybody at the bottom of the hill on hillside on hillside was there keeping an eye on it, and <laughs> we probably went further than we have with any other project to um, to require lot by lot reporting because. It was also going to be a, um, a, everything was going to be custom built. So they couldn't do a, um, couldn't give us a sort of generic, this is how we'll deal with the drainage because it depended on what each lot owner was going to be looking for. Got it. Um, Got it. I, I will say, I will say this is a, it's a fairly flat lot with a, a slight pitch front to back, not side, so it doesn't affect the neighbors. And out back, uh, it opens up into, um, I don't know what that, it's just a huge amount of space back there. Oh, that's, habitat. You know, yeah, yeah, that was where you, you're going to be able to see the annex. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they have the, the, if, you, if you walk far enough, you'll, you'll hit, I believe it's the, um, the assisted care living uh, facility behind Home Depot, um, but Did there's not, yeah, there's it. nothing, nothing out there. Yeah, just wilderness. Okay, okay. Any other comments? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Good. Thank you, Randy, for getting a Great. hold of Kirk. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank I you for showing up, Kirk. Thank you. I appreciate it. We all set? Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Yep. I've got to uh, take a call. Okay. Anything else on the agenda, um, Jim? Was that? Anything else on the agenda? Um, just a few other, just to make sure. Anybody else have any comments? Anybody have any questions, concerns, items? Bill has something. Let him, let him finish his call. Um, yeah, finish like, your call. There's um, uh, Mark, there's that seminar. Oh. All right. I'm going right. to leave, guys. See you all later. Yeah. I'll talk to you tomorrow, Jim. Right. Thank you, Randy. 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 Good night. That's right. There, there was an educational seminar that needed oh, yeah. to get approval and funding to. Okay. I can't remember when that was coming up. There's, I think, uh, is there a charge for those? That's on the affordable housing stuff, right? Oh, uh, was that through the uh, PDPC? I can't remember. Yes. I looked it up. Yeah, I wasn't sure if there was a charge for those or not. I don't remember. Bill May. What we have, let's see.
We yeah, we have a, a a small budget for tuitions and meetings. It's okay. three consecutive Thursdays in a row, the 14th, the 21st, and the 28th from 3 to 4.30 p.m. Tickets covering all three sessions are $25 for non-CHAPA members and 15 for CHAPA members. Okay. Yeah, we have $250 for meetings and tuitions um, in the budget. So, okay. When was that emailed, Mike? It was uh, sent. Bear with me. Oops. December twenty fourth from the town administrator to Bill. Okay. And then Bill forwarded it to us on the twenty fourth. Okay. I think we should charge the Affordable Housing Trust for it. <laughs> the Affordable Housing Trust can pay for stuff like that. Sure. It, is, it can. There, there is specifically mentioned in the thing that the town uh, approved about um, meetings and consultants and expenses for stuff like that. Yeah. Absolutely. So... So I did not get far enough into the registration process to see uh, whether it um, <clears throat> whether they'd accept a purchase order or they were looking for a credit card. Um, it, I believe I can do. There seemed to be a path to register as an organization. So uh, I could probably do that. And maybe the easiest thing would be to just put it on a card and then uh, ask for reimbursement. So yeah. I suspect, um, I suspect that it will uh, bill the town. If it's through, it, if it's the one that I sent you, I'm pretty sure that, um, that that's a lot of it's gonna be um, municipalities participating and they almost always bill the t invoice the town. Okay. I just didn't get far enough into the process to be sure. And, I, and I, let me know, because I have a town credit card. So haven't used it yet. Linda gave it to me today. So <laughs> just let me know. Don't, I, I, don't worry about us reimbursing people. Oh, okay, we'll, we'll figure it out. How many people are interested? What is the date of it again, Bill? Right up. Starts on the 14th, one second. Yeah, I don't have it up at the moment. January 14th, 21st, and 28th. From that's Those are Thursdays from 3 to 4.30 p.m. So it starts next week. Okay. And it's an online? Yeah. I'll, I'm going to forward this to you right now. Uh, yeah. Mail. Jim, Jim, if I can, can, if I can just um, share some information as well. I sat in um, with a webinar with uh, the Lieutenant Governor. Uh, so many things are going on with COVID and so many resources, resources are um, finally happening more, a little bit more aggressively. And one of them is rental assistance. And um, I'm gonna uh, get a little bit more information on that tomorrow, just so you guys know that there's other options as well. Um, for rental assistance for people who are struggling. I'm gonna get more of the details tomorrow and I can send that off to, uh, I don't know, Jim or um, Bill. Yeah. If you send it to me, I forward it to the rest of the board. I am planning at Hadley MA. Yep, okay. Yeah, I'm not finding that uh, if you, if you can forward it to uh, Mike, to Mark, that'd be fine. I'm just not finding it. Uh, uh, which one? The, the seminar notice. Uh, I'll send it. I'll forward it to you, Bill. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I've got it in here. I just, uh, you know, I, I think it came into my personal address. I think that was it. Oh. Is that me? Um. 
Where do you want to go to your personal address or home? You know, send it to the planning at Hadley MA. That, uh, if, you, uh, if you want to CC me, that'd be great. Yeah, I just sent it out to everybody. Right. Okay. Uh, and then I had one other update. Um, the um, we had the, the sign guy in a couple of weeks ago for the Ulta. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, that was a complete waste of time. We had previously approved the sign package for Ulta. It had been brought in by a representative of Ulta and a representative of WS Development. They came in in May and they had a package that showed the signage that uh, this guy is working on. And they compared it to the signage for what had been there for Pier 1 mm -hmm. and satisfied us that the um, uh, what they were putting up was less than what had been there. And we approved the sign package. That's what I thought. And then we went through two rounds with this guy uh, calling from a bar, apparently, and not having <laughs> his files with him. So. You realize Ulta's a $16 billion company? Stock price is at $284. Mm. Wow. Uh, you know, I, I, you know Tart, just for, you know, so we got some big boys there. Target is. $89 billion, but Ulta might be the second largest cap company we got working out of there. Anybody else? Well, Whole Foods is owned by Amazon, but it's not a standalone anymore. How about Walmart? Oh, yeah. Walmart. Walmart. <laughs> Walmart. We got some big boys there. Though. Walmart, $414 billion. Home Depot? It's across the street, but you're right. That's, mm -hmm. that, that stock is uh, $284 billion. But Ulta's right up there. I didn't realize it was such a big firm. Never heard of it. No. no. It's built based in the... Seriously, you guys. <laughs> Bloomingdale. <laughs> Bowlingsbrook, Illinois. This is in my wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anybody have anything else? I do, Jim. Can I just ask? I, I meant to call um, to ask about this. There's some. There was some loose ends that David and I, David Nixon and I were had been working on, but hadn't uh, initial. You know, got it going. Um, but the Connecticut River um, levy analysis and mapping procedure. Have you gotten any um, emails on that at all? No, I have oh. not. Okay, I guess. Um, you haven't got anything either, right, Bill? No, uh, I don't think we're in that loop. You should be in that loop, correct? I guess correct. that's one of my questions. Well, we should be in the the the, the flood insurance section of it, um, and the zoning map portion of it, the flood maps. But I'm not sure we're going to be in the levy portion. I'm not quite sure what that includes. And so what I, I'm going to call. Um, they, they, they were trying to plan a webinar in late fall, but then postponed it. Um, but it is in our hands now for me to follow up with, um, it's Nathan Catania from CDM Smith, a member of Compass JV. Does that sound familiar? No. All right, so I, I will reach out tomorrow um, and have him walk me through uh, what this entails and um, as far as bringing planning and what other uh, groups together to address that. Two are important you, questions that really haven't been resolved. How how much of an expansion in the floodplain, and or is it going to be pretty much the map with minor corrections? Are they going to expand the parameters of the floodplain? That's question number one, and that because when Jim and I went to a meeting and it was at the uh, Jones Library in Amherst, it showed a significant expansion in the floodplain in Hadley. 
And uh, so we'd like to see that map. And was that a preliminary plan or was it the final plan? So that's what we want. And number two, our recreational vehicles, trailers, RVs allowed to be parked in the flood way, not in the flood plain, the flood way. So are you want these questions for this Nathan or is that something, um, I know I, I got halfway through your meeting on December 15th when Ken came and you guys were talking about yeah. the- um, Oh, Ken, Ken couldn't find it. Uh, he, he, he said there's no definitive ac, uh, answer about trailers being parked in the floodway. Yeah, it sounded there was a contradiction with the definitions of that between That's FEMA right. and Hadley. Yes, and, and Hadley has two floodplain zonings. One is the old uh, floodplain that was designated in the initial town map, and this is uh, superimposed, or the FEMA map was superimposed upon that. So there's two different zoning regulations too. So we'll explain that if in further detail later if you want, but uh, yeah. but uh, it appears that it's fairly controversial, the fact that uh, trailers at the floodway. We do have a trailer uh, bylaw because the trailers along the river pop up every five to 10 years. And I think we had a subcommittee and Bill, weren't you on the, uh, that subcommittee or was it Jim? No, I was working on that. Yeah. Yes. And go ahead. You can explain it because you were instrumental in trying to cut the baby in half. And, and well, what we were trying to do is, is just allow, create a process to allow people to be there. So we knew who was there and that they weren't making a total mess of things. Thank you. Um, but we're, we're going to have to talk about that with Ken. And uh, when do we have Ken coming next? Is that uh, the first February meeting? I believe so. Yeah. So the, the compromise basically was that you can have one trailer per lot, but we didn't indicate it was floodway or floodplain. And does the town have the jurisdiction or the ability to overrule the FEMA regulations. So this is something we have to really work out probably more. Well, I don't think we have the ability to overrule them. I think that's the whole point of this model floodplain bylaw that we are okay. supposed to be conforming to them. Okay. Uh, well, let me get more information as to what this was specifically for. Um, and then I'll share that information with you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Did you have something else, Carolyn? I didn't have anything else. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Anybody yeah. else have it? Not, not for there's me. A, there's a screen named Susan. Was that they person came, here? They, they just came on. Susan Blowatsky, the town town collector. She's must be a boring night, Susan, for you to be here. <laughs> Just curious what's going on. <laughs> Tell us something good. <laughs> the money keeps rolling in, right, Susan? It does, but I was curious about the floodplain stuff, so. We all are. <laughs> yeah. Because so, initially when it was proposed, it was a fairly controversial presentation. In fact, it lost uh, the first vote but when the town of Hadley was receiving federal funds to expand the sewer from West Street Common up to the Coolidge Bridge, uh, we were not eligible unless we approved the FEMA regulations as well as the FEMA map. So that's what passed it. But like anything else, we, we don't know how the federal government changes the rules and regulations as they go along. So this is what we want to find out. So I, I do see that we did have Ken tentatively for the 19th. That would, we'd probably want to put him off if, yeah. if Kevin is going forward, but otherwise we'll, we'd have a big hole if we're not going to have Kevin. Okay. I will, 
Kevin right now is planning on coming up, but I got to make sure I'm going to find out for the board of health if they have the uh, sewer, I mean, the septic system plan. Otherwise it's kind of moved to have the public hearing. Mm -hmm. he, said he, had, he said he had something, but I want to make sure that it's the right something. Yeah, the board of health was okay with it. So I will let everybody know. Oh, both sides, you said have hired attorneys. Yes. But there's no no litigation, so we can if there's litigation going on, I don't know if we should meet, but I don't think there is, is there? There's uh, no litigation. No. They're 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 preparing in case, I guess, but we we have a process. We gotta hold our process and then whatever happens, happens with the attorneys if there's anything. Yeah, we just we're we're surprisingly in other communities, the attorneys do all the presentations that the engineers are doing here. <clears throat> so uh, if there is litigation, uh, it's not an appeal of us at this point because we haven't decided anything. Right. They can yeah. chase each other around and pound the table all they want. But um, as Jim said, we have to uh, go through our process. Well put, Bill. Long was not arbitrary and capricious. <laughs> we do what we do. So, okay. I'll let everybody know about the 19th and so then let, I will do what I need to do to contact the different parties and I'll let everybody else know accordingly. Okay. Uh, did, did, did we decide about the, the uh, three seminars beginning on the 14th? If you want to go, register and go. But Bill said he was going to do well, it. Who so, is, no, Carolyn said she was going to do it. Okay. Who is interested in going? Yeah, I'd, I'd do it. Okay. Uh, so three of us. Yeah. Okay. I'd love to go, but I can't make them. So. Okay. Okay. We'll... Uh, Look at that in the morning. Okay, thanks. Very good. Anything else? I have nothing else. If not, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. And second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you and thank you, John. Good night. Good night. Good night.